Today, we're going to learn how to play Stuff and Nonsense. Stuff and Nonsense is a game about adventuring. Actually, it's about not adventuring because you're all liars. You hang around in London, you collect antiques and stories, and then you go back to the Adventurers Club and lie about where you've been. It plays a little bit like a board game, but it's actually built entirely out of cards. Uh, before I build the board, I'm going to show you how the cards are set up. Most of the cards in the deck are the things you're going to collect to try to turn into an adventure. So they're photographs, facts, specimens, anecdotes, and so on. Each card has different point values for different destinations. The destinations are Africa, Mount Everest, China, the South Pole, and the Amazon. So you can see here on my room, the photograph of my room, it's worth one point if you say you've been to Africa. It's no good for Everest in China. It's worth one point for the South Pole and it's worth two points in the Amazon. Now let's set up the board. This is our map of London. It's not really a map of London. It's just eight locations, including two in the center and six around the outside. These things are connected kind of like a wheel, so every one of these is connected to its neighbors here and to both of these cards in the middle. It's really only two steps from anywhere to anywhere else. Now beside the board there's a list of the five destinations and this list and these cards show you what each one is worth at a given time. So right now I've got them oriented towards that main camera and the values are at their second highest at the start of the game. Africa is worth three bonus points, Everest is four, China is six, South Pole is eight, and Amazon is eleven. Now each location card has a number that's represented by a die in the middle. That also tells you how many cards, the minimum number of cards you need to turn in to go to that destination. So for example, if you wanted to go to Everest, you have to bring back at least three cards. I don't have any live players today, so my players are going to be Dr. Lucky, uh, Yumi from Fish Cook, a Plastic Cow Skull, and a Nickel. I'm going to give everybody one card to start. Sorry about that, Dr. Lucky. And I'm going to put eight more cards out on the board. These go out face up. Every card goes into the location that matches its card type. So specimens go into the junk shop, photographs go into the gift shop, and so on. Here's a hero for the pub. Here's another photo. Here's an artifact for the antique shop. Here's a fact for the newsstand. And oh, we got one of everything, an anecdote in the cafe. All the player pawns are going to start in the Adventurers Club. Now you can see I've got everybody marked with a little colored dot. That is not part of the game, it's just so that I can remember who all these people are. Nickel is blue, and how would I remember that? This pawn is Professor Elemental. He is trying to stop us. He's trying to shut us down. He's not at all happy with us doing this imaginary expedition thing, because he's the one who originally thought of it, and we're kind of stealing his act. He's always wandering around the outside, and if he lands on you, it's bad news. We're going to place him in a random place to start, and the way we do that is just pick anywhere, and then roll the die and move him that many spaces, well, just one, clockwise around the outside. This die is also used for randomly elevating these bonuses as they tend to go up and down through the whole game. We'll pick a random player to go first, uh, starting with me, that's one, two, three, four. So, Cow Skull's going to go first, and let's take a look at what he's got in his hand. We're trying to build a good adventure that we can turn in for bonus points. And already you can see that he's got a card for Mount Everest that's worth three points. So he's thinking, I want to go to Mount Everest. Around the board, there's some cards that are good for Mount Everest. You can spot the cold locations because their numbers are white. Professor Elemental moves clockwise around the board. So this is a place he doesn't want to move to. He's going to lose points or a card right away. The Poison Dart Gun's no good for Mount Everest. And he's, and he's also standing right in front of Professor Elemental. There's two cards in a row here that are good for Everest, so we're going to do that. Cow Skull Green is going to go to the pub and pick up the card for Buster the Dog. Now he's got two cards in his hand that are good for Mount Everest, and he might change his mind and use them for something else, but that's how we get started. There's supposed to always be eight cards out, and so whenever we take a card away, we put one back on the board. This card might move Professor Elemental. If there's an arrow here with a number on it that's equal to or greater than the number of players, right now that's five, then he's going to take one step clockwise. This card's blank, but if I turned over the Monkey Hunter card, that's got an eight on it, so he would take a step. And we don't want to get hit by Professor Elemental. We're going to lose either one card from our hand, or one point for every card in our hand. The way you win the game is to get to a certain point score. Right now, these five players are going to play to 40 points.
So we've seen the basics of how a game starts. People are moving around, they're trying to dodge Professor Elemental, and they're trying to pick up cards that are good for certain destinations. Now I'm going to show you what it's like to turn in an adventure. It is a trip to Africa. I go to the Adventurers Club to turn in my adventure, and the cards that I've got are Goat Seed Anything and The Monkey Hunter. They're worth a total of three points in Africa, and the minimum number of cards to go to Africa is two. The bonus points over here is three, so I'm going to score a total of six points. These cards go to the discard pile. The value of Africa gets turned down by one because someone's visited there and it's not cool anymore. And I'm going to roll a die to increase one of these by one as well. So I've rolled Everest and that is going to bring that up to its maximum value of six bonus points. Because I emptied my hand, I also get a bonus. I get to draw a card. And that's how you win with lots of small adventures is you get a bunch of free cards from doing that. One more result of my turning in adventure, Professor Elemental always moves. So ding. That's his free move from me going to Africa. Let's talk about how the market works. The market is a safe place to stand without having to turn in an adventure. That's basically what it's there for. When you go to the market, you are required to turn over exactly one card and that gets you exactly two points. The real reason to go there is not to get the points. It's to get out of the way of Professor Elemental and to be one step away from any location on your next turn. Okay, it's Blue's turn, and both Blue and Red are really in danger of being landed on by Professor Elemental. And what's worse, if they keep moving downstream, they're going to move into spaces with no cards. Blue is not going to go to the market. Instead, he's actually going to walk into Professor Elemental. This requires him to throw a card away. So he's going to throw away the Professor's Journal because he plans to pick up the Poison Dark Gun later, which is another artifact that's also going to be good for the Amazon. And he's going to pick up... Oh, about the best Amazon card that he can get here, the Fossilized Fern. These guys are all only worth one point each. We're going to draw a replacement card for blue, and that is the HMS Incidental, which does have an arrow 5 on it. So this goes in the gift shop, and the Professor moves. When the Professor lands on Dr. Lucky, that's going to hurt Dr. Lucky. He's going to have to throw away either one card, or he's going to have to throw away three points, because he's got three cards in his hand. Uh, right now, he doesn't have really the best, uh, he doesn't have a finished adventure or anything like that, so he is going to go ahead and just throw away one card swallowed by a whale. And that is the result of Professor Elemental moving at the end of Blue's turn. Now we've seen pretty much all the elements of the game. How to pick up cards, how to turn in adventures, why you should stay away from Professor Elemental. The game is going to proceed as people save up more and more difficult adventures. You're going to see people going to China, the South Pole, probably even the Amazon, and the first person to get to 40 points is going to win the game. And that's how you play Stuff and Nonsense. Yeah, let's do it a few more times. Mm -hmm. Hello, I'm Professor <laughs> Elemental from England. I'm James from Kick-Ass Games. It's uh, oh yeah, kick, kick yeah, kick-ass, kick 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 cheap, cheap, cheap cheap-ass. Cheap I'm here from cheap-ass Kickstarter. <laughs> Kicking your ass with a new game.